up our notes this side and then start the review notes. So an ice cream cone has a volume. So there's your cone. And it has a total volume of 156 pi. If the radius of the cone is six, find the height of the cone. Now, we did an ice cream cone yesterday, and we don't like have a formula for ice cream cones. We have what? A formula for the cone and the hemisphere, the half sphere, the half sphere. So what would the cone volume be? This is volume now. So the cone volume is one third pi R squared, which is 36. Time type? Set equal to 156. No, we don't set that equal to 156. Oh, wait. We need, that's the cone. Now we need the half sphere, or the hemisphere. So that'll be one half times. What's the formula for the volume of a sphere? Four thirds pi r cubed, and isn't the radius of the cone the same as the radius of the ice cream? So that will be cubed is two sixteen. Six cubed. Now these two added together make one hundred and fifty six pi, right? Okay. So let's see. What's this? Let's simplify that. What's a third times thirty six? 12. So that's 12 pi h. This right here is 12 pi h. Added to this. All right, so this is a little bit more. Let's see. That is 1 half times 4 thirds times 216 over 1. Right? So I can do that on my calculator, remember. I can type 1 divided by 2 times 4 divided by 3 times 216, and that should give me something. 144. 144. So, and there's a pi in that too, don't forget. There's a pi in that too. So 144 pi, because all this times together gave 144. And that has to equal the 156 pi. <clears throat> now, gang, these cannot be added together. Do you see that? They can't be added together because this one has an H. So what are you going to do? Subtract 144 pi. Now, I also heard somebody say divide by pi. You can do that too. We'll do that next. What is that? 12? 12. Now I can either divide by just the pi or I can go ahead and divide by 12 pi because I'm trying to get h by itself, right? So h will just be not pi. 12 pi over 12 pi is 1. <laughs> Right? So I can divide it by itself. And what would be the unit on that? Read the problem. What would be the unit on that? Inches. Inches. So this, so this is a really short little ice cream cone. Alright, number six. A cylindrical tank. So we have a cylinder. Holds 
one two eight L pi cubic centimeter. So the volume of the cylinder is that. <clears throat> the height of the tank is 20 centimeters. The height of the tank is 20 centimeters. Find the radius. So what are we going to look at our note card for? Volume of a cylinder. So the formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, which is 20. And that volume has to equal 1280 pi. squared H, right on your note card. Now, what do we do to solve this? You can divide by pi. Sure you can. So dividing by pi will leave me with 20 R squared equal to 1280. Divide by 20, is that 64? And 8 root. And then square rooting, R would be 8 unit centimeters. The radius is 8 centimeters. Remember, the dimensions of the figure are always just plain inches, centimeters, feet, whatever. Area is squared, volume is cubed but the regular dimensions, length, length, width, radius, are just the plain inches, feet, or whatever. All right, a rectangular swimming pool is filled with water that costs 18 cents per cubic meter. So it's 18 cents per meter cubed. Okay, that's the cost. Find the cost of filling the pool if the pool's dimensions are six meters by five meters by four meters. So the pool is a rectangular solid and its dimensions are six, five, and four. So what would the volume of the pool be? Six times five times four for 120 cubic meters. So my pool has 120 cubic meters of water in it. It costs me 18 cents a cubic meter to fill it up. So how am I going to figure out how much it costs? 120 times 18 cents. That is 0.18. $21.60. That's how much it's going to cost me to fill my pool. That's pretty easy. All right, let's turn it over and look at the chapter review problems. Just responsible for the circle ones. So there's quite a few circle ones. Let's see what we got. The find the area, find the area of a triangular area having two sides of length 90 and 65 and an included angle of 105. Everybody understand? You got to draw Sean. You got to draw your own picture, right? Now, those of you doing it on the desk, feel free once you get it done to take a picture of it so you can look back at it if you need to. But we've got a um, 
rectangular, or excuse me, a triangular area, 90, 65, and an included angle of 105, we're finding the area. The first slide, right? Yeah, yeah guys, this would be easy. The area is going to be one half, 90 times 65 times sine 105. And type, go ahead and type that in. Round it off to the nearest hundred and then tell me what it is. 3,825. 2,825.33. And the unit on that would be square meters. Remember, this was area. Area. station spots two aircraft. It determines the distance from a common point O to each aircraft and the angle between the aircraft. So here's common point O and here's aircraft one, we'll call him X. Here's aircraft two, we'll call him Y. And it says the angle between them is 52. <clears throat> and the distance from point O to the two aircraft is 58 kilometers and 75 kilometers. All right, so let's let's catch up. Is everybody following what's happening here? We have this point O going out to two aircraft. Now, be careful because some of you are saying one half side side sign. Let's read what the question wants me to know. Find the distance between the two aircraft. So that is not one half side side sign because I don't want to know the area of this triangle. I want to know the length of the side. When you want to know the length of a side, you're going to law of cosines, law of sines, or Pythagorean theorem. Now, obviously, we're not Pythagorean theoreming because we don't have a right triangle. So this is going to be law of sines or law of Cosines. I hear cosines over there. I hear cosines over here. Are we all in agreement this is a cosine? So the angle I know is 52, so cosine 52 goes out here. That means the side that's over here is the side across from the 52, which I've called B. You can call it whatever you want. And then all of this is 58 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 58 times 75. Now because the variable is over here all by itself, type it in. Just type it in. The only thing you might forget to do is what? Square root. So once you get it all typed in, Mamuna, go ahead and type it in for me. And we're going to square root it. Once you get it all typed in, it did equals. We're going to square root it. Did you forget to square root it? You did square root it? Okay, yeah. What is it, Shadow? 60.27. 60.27. So the answer is 60.27 60 kilometers. So the two airplanes are that far apart. Does everybody get 60.27? Is that what we're all getting? Oh, does it say to one decimal place? Okay, so that would be what? If we're taking it to one decimal place, that would be three. 
Now I'm the test. I'm not going to mess with you like that. We'll do the next hundred, but we'll follow the directions here. Thank you, Izzy, for pointing that out. Now, one thing I want you to be careful of is you got to read the whole question. Because those of you that jumped in and were doing one half side side sign, that isn't what the question wanted, right? So make sure you're reading the whole question. All right, number three. A ship leaves port A. All right, so here I'm going to put port A right here. And he's traveling north. So there he goes, traveling north at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. So his speed is 30 kilometers per hour. I'll just keep, I'll kind of keep track of that. So the ship has traveled straight north. Okay. At 12 p.m., the ship is at point B. All right, so it's now he's gone straight north, and now he's at point B. All right, now, this was 10 o'clock. This was 12 o'clock. He's going 30 miles an hour. What is the length of this segment right here? Okay, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Two hours, right? Two hours. He went two hours at 30 kilometers an hour. So how far did he go? 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers. So this distance is 60 kilometers. 10 to 12 is two hours. They gave me a speed. He went 60 kilometers. All right, then what did he do? He adjusts the course 20 degrees eastward. So he veers off 20 degrees to the east. So now he's here. So he was going due north. And then he veered off 20 degrees toward the east. Determine how far the ship is from the port at 1 p.m. when it's at point C. So that's point C, and it's 1 o'clock. All right? So this was 10 o'clock. This is 12 o'clock, and now this is 1 o'clock. So, assuming he's going the same speed, how long is that line? 30. One hour, kids, one hour at 30 kilometers per hour. That's 30. How, part A, determine how far the ship is from port. Now remember, this was the original port. So we are finding that red X, that red line. Let me make it so it's a little bit easier to see. Pretend that's a straight line. That's what we're finding, that, that distance right there. Okay? Now, that is not an area, and it's not a volume. It's a side of a triangle. Law sines or law cosines? What do we know? I don't think I know any angles in the triangle. Do I or do I? Do I know any angles in the triangle, Hunter? You did 20 I know this one right here is 160. Everybody catch that? Remember that a linear pair is 180, so 20 and 160 form a line, so that's 180. Uh, oh, I see. Now, let's see, I don't know this angle. I don't know that angle, and I don't know this side. So do I have a pair anywhere? <coughs> So this is going to be another law of cosines, okay? So the angle is 160. It's going to go out here, cosine. And that means what's going to go over here? X squared. 
get what goes out here is the side across from your angle. So if your angle is 160, <clears throat> then your side is X. And then in here, we'll do what? 30 squared. What? 60 squared. Minus 2 times 30 times. Got it. There it is. This is another one that because your variable is over here all by itself, type it in. team has to get from the port to the people who crashed as fast as they can and that would be the way they go right so now they know how far they have to go now the next question says determine the angle C A B so now we're finding this angle right here because if you're the rescue team and you're right here and you want to get to there, you don't want to know how far away they are, but you also want to know what course you have to travel on. But we're going to figure that out because we're going to figure out what that angle is. All right? Now, how are we going to do that? How are we going to find that angle? Like Law signs. signs. Exactly. One more time. If you want a side or an angle of a triangle, you're going to use the law of sines or the law of cosines. That's how you're going to find sides and angles. So, what's the setup going to be for the law of sine? Sine 160 over 88.79. Sine A over its side, which is 30. The triangle is kind of slanted, but the side across from A would be 30. Is that what we all got? Yeah. Six point six four degrees. All right. The rest of you try to catch up with that. Don't forget, because this is sine A, you're going to have to be second signing when you type it in. So second sign thirty sine one sixty close parentheses divided by eighty eight point seven nine. Let's make sure everybody can get that. central angle is 45 and you are to find the area of the sector and 
the length of the arc. Now we haven't talked about that yet, but we will. Let's do the area of the sector first. You should know how to find that. So find the area of the sector and tell me what you get. Can you get it typed in? What's our formula for the area of the sector? 45 over 360 times 25 pi. Don't forget it's pi r squared. Don't forget the pi. So what did you come up with? 9.82 if you did it decimally. What do we come up with if we do it exactly? Remember, you can type 45 divided by 360 times 25. And what is that? And then you math frac, and it's 25 over 8, she says. 25 eighths pi, and the unit is centimeters. So there would be the exact answer if we left it exact, and there is our decimate. Huh? Oh, that, yep, it is square. Thank you, Judy. You're all over it today. Good job. Because we're doing the area. So one more time. And we're not doing it again because we went through this yesterday or the day before. Type 45 divided by, do it with me. 45 divided by 360 times 25 equals math, enter, enter. Now, the last thing we have to do today is address this arc length thing. We haven't talked about this yet, but it's not a big deal. It's a formula that's going to go on your note card. This is what we call the arc length. That makes sense to you, right? The word arc, that's the arc length. To find the arc length. The formula is very similar to the sector. You put the angle over 360, but instead of multiplying it by pi r squared, you multiply it by 2 pi r, because 2 pi r is the whole circumference. So we're going to take that fraction, angle over 360, times 2 pi r. So, the angle is 45, 2 pi, the radius is 5, so this is 45 over 360 times 10 pi, so you can, doing it exactly, you can simplify that however you want. Um, I think it's going to come out to be 5 pi over 4, or 5 fourths pi. You can do it on the calculator, you can do it by hand. And then decimally, that would have a unit on that. Oh, we got to talk about this. That is an actual length. So the unit is just plain centimeters. Area is squared, volume is cubed. Length whether they're radiuses or heights or widths, are just the plane. All right, and then what is this, 5 pi over 4? Decimal 3.93 centimeters. Um, so I will see you on Monday.